Israel has always relied on its own domestic weapon systems to protect itself against its many regional enemies. In addition to the Galil assault rifle and the Uzi submachine guns, all of these are homegrown weaponry. As a result, the Merkava main combat tank and the Iron Dome anti-ballistic missile defense system are both included in this category. On the other hand, combat aircraft is a weapon area in which Israel continues to rely heavily on imports. Israel Aircraft Industries in the 1970s manufactured the Kafir, but they were taken out of active service in the second half of the 1990s. F-15 Eagles and F-16 Fighting Falcons from the United States are still the Israeli Air Force or IAF's main aircraft in both air and ground combat operations. Not wanting to fall behind in the race for fifth generation fighters, Israel has turned to the F-35I derivative of the very controversial Lockheed Martin Lightning II Joint Strike Fighter for stealth capabilities. For starters, the F-35 costs $44,000 per hour to fly compared to the F-15 EX's estimated $20,000 per hour. The program's total cost, including R&D, comes to $1.5 trillion over a person's lifespan. An important factor is the threat of Iranian intervention. There have been two instances in which the F-35 was utilized in combat by Israel, and both times it was against Iranian targets. Initial strikes on Iranian missile launch facilities were carried out in Syria by the IAF in May of this year. A statement by then IAF Commander Alouf, or Major General, Amikam Norkin was made public, stating, Currently, the F-35 is being flown throughout the Middle East and has already engaged in combat on two separate fronts. To follow that in air-to-air -air combat, the IAF used the Lightning II for the first time, but not against manned enemy aircraft. Two Iranian unmanned aerial vehicles were shot down over Israeli land in March 2021 by Israeli fighter pilots from the 116th and 140th squadrons using Adirs. A Toast to the F-35 Lightning what gives the AF F-35 pilots an advantage over their American counterparts? Lockheed Martin has refused to undergo major client state-specific modifications to the F-35. Israel is the only nation on Earth with a tailored version of the American-built warplane. In order to get around this obstacle, Israel enlisted the help of its own defense contractors. The deal allowed the Israeli defense industry to produce high-tech helmets and wings, all paid for by military funding from the United States of America. The Israeli Air Force IAF, has access to the advanced digital architecture of the F-35 variant, including its communication systems, electronic warfare and surveillance suite, and mission control hardware, which may be externally upgraded. Mighty One Israeli hardware includes a plug-and-play electronic warfare system for adding on systems such as air-to-air -air missiles and external electronic warfare pod. Israeli engineers are also working to make their fighter jets the only ones in the world with external drop tanks, which would eliminate the need for airborne refueling on long-range missiles. Key Israeli military officers have voiced strong confidence in the F-35's capabilities, despite its high price tag, as just what Israel needs to deal with emerging threats. The F-35 is the fighter plane of the future that will allow Israel to maintain its aerial superiority and technological advantage in the region, said Israeli Defense Minister Ehud Barak in an interview. It will assist to improve Israeli national security by providing the IAF with better near- and far-range capabilities. Other than its inability to deal with threats from dedicated air superiority fighters like the Su-35 and its lower air-to-air -air combat capability than even the venerable F-15, key figures in the Israeli military leadership have been harshly critical of the F-35. This criticism has been repeated repeatedly by key figures in the United States military leadership. Finance Minister Yuval Steinitz has questioned Israel's acquisition of the F-35 because of its high cost, stating that a large-scale project should not be put solely in the hands of the Defense Ministry. He's not alone, though. It was also pointed out that pilot training, building a hangar, and maintaining it all save a significant amount of money. Moshe Ahrens, a former Israeli defense minister, foreign minister, ambassador to the United States, and aeronautical engineer, has been an outspoken critic of the F-35 program, saying, The F-35 development program has been plagued by repeated delays and rising cost overruns. 
This joint strike fighter's performance has been hampered by the design compromises that were necessary to meet its intended role as a joint strike fighter. Anti-stealth technology is currently being developed, and it may yet detract from the aircraft's key advantage before delivery or during its service life. To counter the IAF's aircraft, Russia and India are developing the Sukhoi T-50 or Su-57, which would be offered to Arab air forces. Considering that Russian Sukhoi and even the earlier F-15 are superior in terms of speed, range, altitude, maneuverability, and payload, Aaron's criticism of the F-35 makes sense. Moreover, modern air defense systems such as the S-400, which are meant to target significantly more survivable stealth jets like the F-22, have extremely limited capabilities against the F-35, meaning its advantage over older fighters may be minor when flying in hostile airspace. Israeli military officials have already stated that purchasing a significant number of F-35 jets is not a top priority. They prefer to instead purchase F-15I Ra'am strike fighters, which are older but still provide many advantages over the F-35, including greater speed, altitude, weapons, and range. While the future of the Israeli Air Force and the F-35's place in it remains uncertain and largely depends on developments elsewhere in the region, including the proliferation of advanced aircraft and air defense systems to the country's potential adversaries such as Iraq, Egypt, Syria, and Iran, there is a considerable possibility that the costly stealth jet will not completely replace the F-16 as the country's main multi-role fighter. To lessen the Air Force's dependence on the F-35 and modernize its combat capabilities with Without purchasing huge numbers of the new jet, the F-15X air superiority fighter and upgraded later versions of the F-16, which were delivered in 2006, might be prioritized. For years, Israel has modified U.S.-made fighter aircraft, including the F-16 and F-15, to improve their combat capabilities and, in particular, their survivability. The F-35 is the latest in this tradition. Because Israel has been able to modernize its fleet with state-of-the-art electronic warfare systems, the Israeli Air Force can now fly the F-16I, its own variant of the platform, into heavily defended Syrian airspace and sustain minimal losses. Normally, Israeli F-16 fighters would be extremely vulnerable and take extremely heavy losses if operating over Syrian airspace. A typical F-16C deployed by the U.S. and its allies for comparable missions would have resulted in far more losses. It was predicted by a senior IAF officer that within 10 years of the F-35 entering service, the aircraft will be vulnerable to anti-aircraft weaponry systems such as SAMs, which are surface-to-air missiles. One example is the S-400 surface-to-air missile system, which is now being deployed in the Middle East and has anti-stealth capabilities. While the F-35 is neither the smallest nor most durable stealth aircraft, Western observers have referred to it as pseudo-stealthy compared to the F-22 and B-2. A senior Pentagon official explained that the F-35's electronic warfare capabilities must be able to be rapidly developed because of the aircraft's expected service life of 30 to 40 years. The F-35 is absolutely suitable in its most basic configuration. Adding software to the system is all that's needed, he continued. With the addition of drop tanks, the aircraft's range can be greatly improved, as has been the case with the majority of their F-16 and F-15 aircraft. As Tyler Rogoway, a defense analyst, points out, the combat aircraft's range is important for any nation, but it is of particular importance to Israel, whose principal threat is Iran. The country's borders are 1,700 kilometers away from the closest Israeli target. In the past, the Israeli Air Force has bombed locations in the Horn of Africa and as far away as Tunisia. Their global reach serves as a deterrent to potential aggressors. Hence, they must be able to strike reliably over long distances. What do you guys think about Israel's new fighter? Tell us down in the comments below. That's all for today, guys. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and press that bell icon for any new updates. See you in the next one.